Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Andrew, and this is an AWS tutorial series on setting up WordPress in the cloud. In this tutorial series, we're going to use a bunch of different Amazon Web Services. We will use ElastiCache for our Redis instance. We'll use uh, RDS for our MySQL box. We will use S3 for storing our photos, CloudFront for our CDN, and OpsWorks for our automation. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to go over my security groups with you. So here we have our load balancer security group, all inbound traffic on port 80. Our EC2 WordPress production servers are going to allow inbound traffic on 80 just to the load balancer. Our staging server is going to be port 80 and 22 so we can log into it. Our RDS box has MySQL port open to the staging and the production server. And our Redis box has the, their respective ports open to the staging and production servers. And on all of these security groups, my outbound traffic is all traffic. So let's go ahead and launch our staging server instance. We're going to select Ubuntu. Since it's just a staging box, we'll use a micro. And we'll go ahead and call this staging WordPress. And we'll give it that security group of EC2 WordPress staging. And it has port 80 open so I can view the site and 22 so I can log in. Let's launch our instance. So now that our instance is launching, let's go ahead and create a load balancer. So go ahead and click create load balancer. And we're going to name it WordPress and launch it in our VPC. And we'll add all of our subnets to it. We're going to assign the security group we created earlier for the load balancer of WordPress. And we're going to give it a ping path on slash. We have no instances to put into it yet. And we'll go ahead and launch it. Great. So now that our load balancer is created, we can go ahead and create our MySQL server. But first, we need to create a subnet group. So we'll create a subnet group. We'll just name it WordPress select our VPC, and we'll add all of the uh, available subnets. And now we can launch our DB instance. So we'll launch a MySQL server. Since this is just a demo, we can use all the basics, so we're not going to launch it in multi-AZ. We can use a micro server. 5 gigs is fine. And we'll just name uh, everything for the settings of WordPress. We'll make sure we put it inside of our VPC. Will publicly accessible will be no. And our security group will be our RDS security group that we created. And our database name can just be WordPress. And since it's just a demo, uh, we won't set any backup. However, for production, I would recommend setting a backup. So we'll go ahead and launch that. And since that'll take a little bit to launch, we can go ahead and create our Redis server. So we'll jump over to ElastiCache. And same thing with the RDS server, we need to create a uh, subnet group. We'll add all of our uh, subnets. We'll go ahead and click Create. And now we can create our Redis cluster. So we'll select Redis. And we can disable replication since it's just a demo. We can give it a T2 micro, and our cluster name will be just WordPress. We'll launch it inside of our VPC, and we'll select our Redis security group, and we'll launch our cluster. And while that is creating, we can go ahead and create our bucket in S3. So we'll go ahead and click Create Bucket. And well, and since these have to be unique, we can name this AWS Tutorial Series dash WordPress, and we'll launch it in Oregon, and we'll click Create. Great, so that's all set up. Great, so now we can log into our staging server and set that staging server up. Basically, this is the server that we are going to do deployments from. So I have all of these commands in my GitHub for you to easy copy and paste. So I'm just going to install the components needed for our staging server. Great. So those are all installed. We're going to enable a couple of modules for, for Apache. And we're going to 
also enable mcrypt for php and now we need to edit the default configuration for apache this is just to get our staging server up and running so we'll go ahead and delete all of this and we can have the virtual host I've created for you. So now we'll log into our www directory. We can just remove anything that was there for default. And then we need to create a staging directory that we can clone our repository in. Now this repository I already have in my GitHub and I will link below. So we'll make a staging directory because that was in our Apache uh, virtual host. And we'll clone our repo into that. Great, so our repo is now cloned. We just want to give it uh, permissions of 744 and we're going to give it a ownership of www.datic because that is what Apache is running under. And now we can restart Apache and we should be able to see the welcome to WordPress. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up WordPress for the very first time on this staging server so we can get the database all set up. So now we should be able to go to the public IP of that server. And we should see the WordPress setup. So here we go. So let's go ahead and click continue. And let's go. So we're going to give it everything has been... Uh, uh, database name and username and password has all been WordPress to keep it simple. So we need to grab the endpoint of our RDS server. We'll paste that in there. And we'll go ahead and click submit. And we'll run the install. And we'll just give it a username and password of WordPress just to keep it all simple. And remember, this is just our staging server, so no one in production should be able to see this server. So we'll go ahead and install WordPress. And we'll log in just so I can show you that it's working. Username and password of WordPress, we log in. And great, we have it all set up. So now we need to start setting up our plugins. But first, let's take a look at the site. We can see that everything's working. Great. So let's go to our plugins, and I have these already pre-configured in my GitHub repo as well. So we need to activate the S3 and CloudFront, the web services, and the Redis object cache. So we'll activate those. And now we need to provide our credentials for AWS. So I'm just going to provide these off camera so no one can see my access and secret key. So now we can configure the S3 and CloudFront URLs. So we're going to go ahead and click on S3. Everything is good. We can leave everything on. And in the advanced options, we're going to go ahead and select these all to be on. Great. So we can go ahead and click Save Changes. So those should be all saved. And now what we need to do is we need to edit our WP config file because we need to add the elastic hash uh, Redis URL. So I've provided that in my GitHub repo. All we have to do is add this WP Redis host to our uh, WP config. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in. Remember, this is still our staging server that we're using. So we're going to go ahead and go to our elastic hash. We're going to go to our node and we're going to grab our endpoint. And we'll paste that in here. And now we need to go to our Redis plugin. And we're just going to enable it. So we'll go ahead and enable object cache. We can see that the host is there. And we can see that we're connected. Great. So now Redis is enabled. So now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into OpsWorks. And we're going to want to create our first stack. And this first stack, we're just going to call WordPress. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this as our automation tool. We're going to set up Ubuntu 14.04 as our operating system. Set our default uh, security key as AWS Tutorial Series. And we're going to use Custom Chef Cookbooks that I've provided in my GitHub repo. And I'll link that as well below. And we'll go ahead and put, paste that in there. And we're going to use our own security groups for this, so we can disable OpsWorks security groups. 
and now we can go ahead and create a layer. So we'll click add layer and we're going to want to add a PHP layer. Our security group is going to be the EC2 WordPress production server and we'll select our load balancer that we created earlier called WordPress. And now we want to make sure in our network tab that public IP addresses is enabled. And now we can edit our custom recipes. There are two custom recipes we're going to need. We're going to need the WordPress configuration recipe and we're going to need the uh, WordPress login recipe. And these are just basically setting up WordPress so that every time we uh, launch a new server, they're all going to be identical. And I'll show you that later. And so you can see in the WordPress configuration and the WordPress login that these are in my GitHub repo that you can take a look at. So we'll go ahead and click Save. And now we can go to Apps. And we need to add a new app. And this app is basically just going to be our uh, WordPress from GitHub that, uh, that we use for our staging server, the exact same thing that we cloned. And all we're going to do is we're going to grab the uh, URL for the repository that we cloned in our staging server. And we're just going to add that to the app. And we're going to click Add App. And now we are going to edit the WP configuration file within our Chef Cookbook. So we'll jump over to the repository here. We're going to edit this wpconfig.php. And I've already configured this for you. Um, so basically, you're just going to change these with your defaults. And every time a production server is booted, it's just going to overwrite that wp-config with that that is in that uh, Chef Cookbook. And so I'm going to create a, a couple servers here. I'm going to create three servers in different availability zones. And remember, if you do not know how to use OpsWorks, I've created a tutorial for that as well, and I'll link that below. So we'll add three servers, all in different availability zones. And we'll go ahead and start our instances. And so now that our instances are online, we can go ahead and jump over to our uh, load balancer and we can see that we have our WordPress site and this is round robining across those three servers. So we can see that everything is working. It's using our RDS server. It's using our Elasticache server. It's using S3. Everything is all set up and online. So now what we need to do is we need to go to CloudFront and we need to create a distribution. So we're going to go ahead and create a web distribution. We are going to point it to our load balancer once it loads. There we go. So we'll go ahead and load our load balancer there. And we are going to leave all of the default settings. They should be fine. And we can go ahead and create our uh, distribution. So now we need to copy the uh, domain name of the CloudFront distribution because what we're going to do is we're going to edit our wp-config file in our Chef Cookbooks. And we are going to add that in as our new home and site URL. So we'll go ahead and edit our wp-config.php. We're going to paste that new URL in. We're going to click Save. And then what we need to do now is we need to go back into OpsWorks and we need to update our custom cookbooks and then we need to execute uh, one recipe to deploy that wp-config file out. So we'll jump over to OpsWorks, we're going to go into our WordPress layer and we can jump over to deployments and we're going to run a command and this command is going to be uh, updating our custom cookbooks on all of our servers. Great, so now that those are complete we need to go ahead and execute a, uh, a custom cookbook. So we'll execute a recipe here. And all we're going to do is gonna, we're going to do the wp-config default. And basically, that's all that's going to do is just it's just going to deploy that new wp-config.php file out to our application server. So now the next thing that I want to show you is how to actually deploy code out to your production servers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our staging server. And we're going to log in. And all we're going to do is we're going to download a new plugin. We're going to commit it to our GitHub repository, and then we're going to pull it into production. So we'll go into our dashboard. We're going to go to plugins, and we're just going to add a new plugin. So we'll go ahead and search for a plugin called Team, and all we're going to do is we're just going to add a Meet the Team grid. So we'll go ahead and install that. And remember, this is just only going to get installed on our staging server. So we'll activate it in staging, and which means it'll be active in production once we deploy the code. So we can see we have our team plugin all set up in staging. And if we do a quick get status, we can see we have a new plugin available. So we'll go ahead and add that and we're going to commit that to production. 
so we'll do uh, commit real quick and we'll just say we have a new team plugin and we'll push that up to production great so now that is added to our github repository and now all we need to do is basically we need to go back to OpsWorks and we need to do a deployment of a new app. So we'll jump into WordPress. We're going to go to deployments and we're going to say deploy an app. And all this is going to do is it's just going to say, hey, let's go out and look at our GitHub repository and let's deploy the latest changes. So now we're going to have in production, we're going to have those team member changes. So we click deploy an app and we can see that our app is just about complete. And now our app is in production. So production now has the team members plugin. So the next thing I want to show you is adding a, uh, a photo to our library. So we'll go ahead and add the photo. And basically, I just want to show you that this gets uploaded into S3. So we've uploaded our file, and we can see it in our library. So now if we jump over to S3 and we go into our bucket, we can see that we have a WP content and uploads just like you're used to. Same exact uh, folder structure. And we can see that we have our uh, photos inside of S3. So I know we've gone over a lot of different web services, but just to recap, um, we are using OpsWorks to automate our WordPress deployments um, via Chef Scripts. We're using CloudFront as our CDN, um, ELB as our load balancer. We're using RDS as our MySQL database storage and Elasticache for our Redis cache layer, as well as S3 to store all of our photos. Um, and we have set up a staging server so that we can make edits and changes um, without our production servers ever seeing them until we deploy them. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.